Give her. Hello. Hey Hello. Guys. Hey. Nice to hear the real intro. Oh yeah, I feel, it's like it's like I feel like I'm in better resolution already. Like I can I can see my hands. Oh yeah. That's why my videos were That's super cute though. So <laughs> I saw I saw them <laughs> with, the, with, with the worst sound in the world. Sorry to our <laughs> long suffering listeners, if you're still hanging around, uh, you will. You what a what a treat this is. We're back in studio. <laughs> back in studio. Everyone is healthy. Everyone is back from vacation. Yeah, <laughs> not for a long, not for, not for too long. But hey, guess what? You're listening to the Flat Out Fever podcast, episode, episode number fifty. What? 50? Episode, episode 50 episode 50 episode 50 this is really exciting guys 50, 50 times let's we gotta we gotta we gotta Should think. We consider this like our anniversary well this is kind of uh i guess so what yeah. do you call this a bicentennial Ooh, no bicentennial That's 200 years or maybe i don't know yeah <laughs> it's 200 years <laughs> uh sesqu sesquicentennial no is that a 25 years and this would be like a half centenary let's call it that <laughs> <laughs> we are half the way through 100 episodes and to commemorate that oh actually before we we, we, we do before we get into any further i really 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 would like to take a minute to thank everybody that's been listening everybody that's been uh contributing to the conversation and you're welcome Twitter. also yeah <laughs> 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 nice, Danny. Exactly, exactly. No, but yeah, no, uh, but for real. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah, and this has been awesome. Yeah, yeah what fun. what it's what fun. a treat it's been since, since a year since it's we right. started, right? Um, Such humble beginnings. Oh yeah, <laughs> nothing worked back then. Start at the library like today. <laughs> oh yeah, started out at the library. Now we're here with what can only be described as a giveaway. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We're doing a giveaway. Yeah, we're doing a giveaway. Yeah, thanks for listening to yeah to 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 really. I mean, we we really appreciate every single person that listens to our show. This is why this is the only reason why we do it. Like, we really uh, don't get anything out of this. We're just fans, just like you. Uh, but to commemorate that 50 episode, and because we're in into our second year, we're gonna do a giveaway. This is a good one, guys. It's a big juicy one. For long, for way too long, we've been harping on about how. You got to go to a race. You got to go to a race. It won't make a difference. I mean, you, you, you can be an F1 fan, but if, if you've never been out there to a race, you just won't ever, ever experience it fully. I mean, Mike, you yes, went to a race. And I did. How, like, different. Changed my life. Right? Changed my life. <laughs> we took you to a race. Like, by then you knew, like, about F1. We I had knew even, the cars. I knew. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, that's that guy. Yeah. yeah. Or <laughs> so-and-so. Or what's his nuts. Yeah. Ah, it's the real guy. <laughs> Honestly, bye, if, bye. You, if you've never been to a race, whether you're a fan, new or old, you should go. And that is why we want to help you. We're, gi we're giving away tickets. We're giving away tickets That's to it. a race. That's it. Wow. All the way to play. Wow. <laughs> we said it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be obviously to the Canadian Grand Prix. Canadian Grand Prix. Yeah. Montreal. So this is happening. Uh, June 12th. The, yeah. 10th, 11th, and 12th. Yeah. I, I be sure, actually, to go there on the Thursday because they have a fantastic uh, open track day. Yes. Uh, not many tracks in the world do have it. You don't uh, need tickets to go into that. Right. But yeah, you will have tickets if you win them and be there, hopefully, anyways. Big announcement. Uh, and uh, we're going to get into the details and actually start the contest um, from our next um, uh, Flat Out Fever episode 51 that's coming up next week next so week. Just stay tuned for that mm. it will be something like this like we're gonna announce everything uh, as soon as the episode begins so you don't have to stick around for the whole thing if you don't like the long format but um, uh, one thing that we can tell you right now that we can give more details about the tickets themselves so it is a f it is two full weekend passes Friday practice Saturday and Sunday June race. 10th June 10th 11th and, and 12th, and 12th. Uh, and um, it's uh, it, nothing fancy. It's just GA GA tickets, but uh, that's you know. <laughs> this is not like a might might happen. No, tickets is, have been no, purchased. We, yeah, we ha we have the tickets. We so. have the tickets. So these are GA tickets for the full weekend. Uh, if you don't like GA, like you can always upgrade them. If not, like actually, it's GA is what we do every year. It's and it's not fun. That bad. It's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. If if you buy grandstand tickets, you better wake up around five a.m. Anyways, if you want to sit. Anywhere near the top. Yeah, if you're, if you're serious it's like a first about come, F1. first, first served. 
even with <laughs> even with the uh, the grandstand tickets. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Get there early. It's 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 gonna be a good time though. Montreal is has. If there's one tip I'd like like to give the people, is yes, buy some proper shoes. <laughs> Get some proper insoles. There's lots of walking. <laughs> it's true. It's a big track. I killed myself almost. My feet. <laughs> but yeah, this is how big is that? We're giving away tickets. I know. Look, I, I'm gonna tell everyone. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet. Anyway, yes, yeah, uh, ticket tickets uh, entry is open to. The entire population of the earth. Oh yes, starting. yeah. No, you don't have to be in Canada. Like if you if you want to make it the trip. Oh, and uh, uh, you buy we, the plane tickets. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, we will be making the the official. Okay, so we're gonna announce the the, the terms of the contest next week, yeah. and it's gonna and then uh, entries are gonna be open for another six weeks or so. Yeah. Uh, in so, the in the meantime, just hype yourself up, prepare yourself, yeah. think about it, how much you really want to go. Yeah. And think uh, ab- that's it. Think about F1. Think about you. Think about you in F1. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Montreal. And, like, I think it's also, like, a if, great place uh, do, in general. Uh, Montreal is badass. You know how many people, like, from Canada, like, people that I've met, like, that have lived their entire lives in, in Ontario, for example, have never been to Montreal? Mm. It's I was one of those me, people. You don't, you don't need an excuse. Just go there. Yeah. And if this is going to be your excuse, like, trust, you'll thank us later. At this point, I've spent somewhere around fifth between 15 to 20 days in montreal they've, they've all been great <laughs> oh fantastic yeah they've all been great and they really uh, embrace the f1 oh yeah that's, whole, that's something city. really cool about it too i've been, I've been yeah i've been there also outside of formula one casino casino weekend yeah, yeah. etc you know the jazz festival great, anyway great, great party city great city they fully embrace f1 like uh like mike said it's gonna be a good show no matter what like if you th- as far as you can think i'm sure if you're an f1 fan you can remember that there's been some classics in canada if you've never been to a race or if you've been to a race and you're a familiar face don't worry still apply like let's mm. come on we want to hear we want to we want to we want to hear your entries or you know see your entries hashtag uh, the great 2016 flat out fever 2016 montreal ticket giveaway <laughs> Hashtag long 2016 hashes. twice Christ. or you lose. <laughs> 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 hashtag long hashtags. All right. Yeah. 140 character hashtag, hashtag. Moving on to the actual show. We're going to talk about testing and stuff yeah. that happened within it. Yeah, testing was good. You see Ted's uh, oh. Ted's corner, Ted's corner. With uh, the development, development corner. corner. Uh, yes. Well, okay. I, I, I did see that. Yes. He, lots of interesting stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, Obviously, we can't go over most of that here. That's Ted's. <laughs> that's Ted's business. That's Ted's business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we 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 can still talk. Okay, so af- after testing, like you want to pull those uh, pictures up right now on the on the book. Um, I'm not. We're still live, bud. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 No, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you're like. I think we're off. I think we're off. No. <laughs> Psych. No, we're still good. Um, because a few things can be. Uh, if, if you go team by team, uh, which is what pretty much everybody's doing out there, uh, about the things that happen during testing, um, like you don't get the real sense of like where. Well, obviously, everybody can agree that Mercedes is still at the top. Yeah, very much so. They completed Quite obviously, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. they completed more laps than anybody else, and uh, oh, way more than than Haas for sure. <laughs> oh, that is the look of defeat. <laughs> <laughs> what happened here? Well, Haas, they don't know what's going on. Oh no! Yeah, G- uh, Mr. Haas, there he was. He was like, uh, well, last week already he was saying. There's way, way, way more difficulty than we ever expected in just getting this team going. He's basically we have no idea what we were expecting, first of all, to getting into this. And going forward, we're going to hope for the best. That's yeah. Wow. Oh that's basically God. what he said last week. Yeah. He, he, well, he, they he, built he, a plane he, didn't, he, and didn't know how to fly. He, he, he took, he took um, what's his name, uh, Gunther Steiner. He took Gunther Steiner. He, he gave him a loving embrace had his head and said Gunther we're not in North Carolina anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is <laughs> you're gonna be fine yeah. you're okay this is oh, this no. is scary and complex and it's F1 and there's there's way too much to do yeah 
But they've been having problems that have been attributed to actually their engine supplier. Ferrari. <laughs> no way. But and the Ferrari themselves. They, they can't really say too much public about that. Of course not. So, like, did Ferrari just, like, they, they just bought an engine Ferrari and they're like, have fun. Well, they bought. Ferrari is an F1 um, manufacturer of engines as well as a team. But, right. they, yeah, they, they, they're an engine manufacturer. So, if engi- oh, if there's the, of, the, of the four engine manufacturers right now. Uh, they have like a number of teams mm. that they supply. Haas is one of those teams that Ferrari just happens to supply a current spec engine. Now, the thing is that when you make a the deal, the only one? No, there's Sauber is the other one mm. that that gets current engines, and uh, Toro Rosso gets last, last year's, year's Ferrari engine. engine. Oh fuck! Yeah, not the current one. No. That's uh, that wasn't part of the deal because they, well, they were kind of a rival team. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, like they're Red Bull themselves where uh the, you know the, both red bull teams were having a, a big fight that's what that's how we ended up last year right mm. the big big fight between red bull and the, and all the, the the engine suppliers and they thought that they were gonna get uh a, a cost worth but that that didn't happen over the winter now uh, the the manufacturers are fully in control of f1 and within that is where we find ourselves today with a ferrari that probably like built a pretty decent engine but mm. they changed a lot of stuff and we've been talking about this because they the layout of of, of the way that the engine is uh from last year to this year is it's really it's it's very different mm-hmm. where they put the batteries where they put the uh the intercoolers like all that stuff all that tech all those technical bits for uh, uh for the hybrid systems and whatever have kind of been reshuffled around and even just from a layman's point of view, like when I saw the pictures of how different the uh, the different arrangements were, I'm pretty yeah, I'm pretty sure like you you showed or you brought it up in, in the podcast, and we said yeah, that's a big change. Mm-hmm. So the Ferraris like have had, I mean, all the Ferrari engines really, the the, the the customer teams that have Ferraris and Ferrari themselves have had some problems with reliability. The, the MGUH was moved. The MGUK was moved like way <laughs> completely different configuration yeah to the front of the engine yeah they, they changed a lot and and, sorry go ahead uh, i'm just saying oh. there's no way that you can like make changes like that in f1 and you know expect uh, not expect something like this yeah and there's no way you can partner yourself with ferrari <laughs> and talk publicly about something like this no so is the Sauber team having difficulties with their engine? Yeah, they've had they've had some reliability issues as well. Remember, really? they didn't even show up with their 2016 car until the second testing. Oh no! Yeah, which was almost exactly identical to last year's car. Yeah, yeah. They're, they, that's the team that now then, they're the team that is in the biggest financial concerns. Them it's, and it's kind of come out today so. that Sauber hasn't paid a lot of their salaries to their employees and oh, contractors no. from last year already. They haven't, uh, I guess, unlocked enough money to pay them forward. So, yeah, they're, they're in big trouble. While, while we're on the topic, though, before yeah. before we move, I was going to talk about this later, but it's related. Haas, Gunther Steiner. Go go back to that last picture, too. Oh, I don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> when, the, the, it's, you go. it's like that arrow to the left. Somewhere oh. related here to the... <laughs> The oh, plight right. of, of Haas oh. so far. Haas has yet to sign a contract there, with Formula One group of companies regarding their commercial rights this, yeah. for this season. So Distribution of the pot. Yeah, which means they, they're almost like they're competing, but they're not part of Formula One. They have not signed that contract. Gunter Steiner, the man you just mentioned, who is the the head of the F1 team? Yeah, the the head guy. He he said basically like it's down to the nitty gritty. Like it's obviously the first race is in two weeks. <laughs> As it stands, they could win the championship and leave with nothing, mm. absolutely nothing. But like it basically their their existence more or less comes down to them signing this contract which yeah. i guess is kind of how bernie does his business it seems that way no deal no money which w- was was kind of came out with it if they do sign the contract though and they can play 7th in the championship 
which isn't that high. Seventh in the championship pays 40 million British pounds, which is half their budget for the year. Jesus. Yeah. And 10th place, 11th place as of right now pays, I believe, nothing. Pays zero. F- last place pay, plays, pays nothing. But if... Well, they, and, they, they, all, no, they all get a little bit of money at least from, from, from TV. All of them. But yeah, there, but, but there's, no additional, there were, there's no additional like price money. There was because of the eleventh team. There was oh, some yeah, kind of right. some kind of amendment signed right, last right, year right, that right, you right. get paid. I forget. I think eight million pounds. It's, it's not. It's it's almost nah. as far as F one goes. It's almost nothing. Yeah. But last place. But to remember, they have no contract. Which hopefully and as, uh, alleged. Hopefully they will. Yeah. Uh, apparently they will sign this. Last place pays still twenty five million pounds. It's like forty million dollars, wow. something like that. Wow. But Haas has no no contract. <laughs> That's but, crazy. Yeah, let's, look at the, let's look at the rest of the teams, though. Well, okay. And he, he, here's the thing. Um, I was Wait, when talk, I, talk. when I was reading about this, uh, and I remember actually like there was I don't, I don't know if you saw there was there was a like a Sky Sports F1 special with Will Buxton and Ted and some other dude from from uh, F1 Racing magazine, and they were just kind of like going through like what the what they saw from mm-hmm. and then you know a, a lot of the stuff like i'm sure it, it's everywhere wherever you can read it the the torosos are looking great for having been such a late entry uh sauber is not looking that great um mercedes has have clearly been working in many 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 little details like that like those crazy barge boards and whatever like they have like <laughs> because they had they were so far ahead in terms of engine Mm-hmm. already at the end of last year they had maybe a lot more uh manpower and resources to focus not necessarily on the engine as much as like just little details in the car like like just just down to like it, it, everything is, is basically the, the same car as last year but yeah. so many things like little that they fiddle with so many things to make it like that much better that much quicker wow um that's that's what mercedes have done and that's what they showed up the ferrari was looking um uh, quick but unreliable. You know, this is the stuff that we've been hearing, right? But one thing that they didn't seem to agree on was exactly how they felt that each team w- was going to play. So if you watch that that interview with, or sorry, that that, that special with Will Buxton and Ted and whatever, before Buxton goes off the deep end there, oh, towards no. the end, he <laughs> they, they they started like kind of ranking and and in the at least in the middle of the field or. Or, or even like how far ahead uh, Mercedes was from Ferrari, they couldn't really agree. And there's been uh, people from the BBC also uh, putting their own statistics together and uh, out of Sport Magazine, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. But the best that I could find was from this guy. Now, we brought this blog up before uh, F1 Metrics. Really cool stuff. They did uh, this economic analysis on like how much F1 spends before uh, since it turned around it turned out that like the numbers weren't 100 percent precise but you know it's pretty good a- approximation now this guy uh he has he's like a, a phd with uh with like a strong background on mathematics and, and and statistics so cool so he he understands this he understands numbers and um based on 100 uh or uh, information about 103 stints that were put out there by uh at f1 D- debrief mm. He basically compi- compiled the data, and if you like, is this on the screen? Is this on? Yeah, yeah. Go down. This uh, for the for the listeners. There's gonna be a link to this article for sure. So he basically takes keep going. Yeah, he takes the raw data, and by doing a number of things like trying to separate it and like adjust it f- by by fuel load, he starts getting like way down. Like yeah, okay. keep scrolling. Yeah, way down to like you know more more. Like, like better like way cleaner data way, way cleaner approximations uh, keep going down and like he so he separates it by uh, by uh, um, like he he, he, try, he tries to guess and, and he uses m- like a few like very very well thought out arguments to like say like okay so there's going to be a number of tires that are going to be uh, or times that are going to be under the fir- like a first stint kind of scenario mm-hmm. second stint third stint fourth stint there's going to be some qualifying oh. laps yeah so go ahead this i haven't seen this yet this graph is basically showing like the slower you go the faster you go <laughs> yeah no okay so basically, yeah. You, 
let me let me get to this in one second okay let's let's go up a, a bit from there okay so he's so he's basically right here trying to clean up the data trying to like make um uh, it, uh like make like turn the data so that it like matches like you know some sort of a uh prescribed form so that we can actually like use this data usefully uh so he he takes all of the four stints and basically tries to like equate them all as if they had been um going on like a fourth stint kind of uh, fuel load um and on a medium tire medium set of tires so mm -hmm. with that now by parting with that then you can make some really interesting calculations like this what this means is that what well, it, it, this graph right here and th it's um optimal degradation rate versus number of laps in a stint is basically telling you that so somewhere around if if your stint is like below like say like like from zero to three or zero to four uh, laps. So if you're doing a very short stint, i.e. qualifying, then you can just gun it because it doesn't matter. Like, so the optimal degradation rate, like at that point, you get about two laps out of that tire. Yeah. On as fast as you can go. Yeah. As fast as you can go, it doesn't matter. Like it's still going to like, it's, it's, it's going to degrade like s s so slowly that, but or the same tire you can, run it slower for 25 that, laps. exactly so in in if uh, in here here somewhere amount. in between 15 and 20 which is um the normal stints within a race right you're That's looking at losing somewhere around 0 0.2 seconds per lap so that so that you can keep the tire at the optimal amount that's what they mean, man. That's what they mean when they're saying like, "Yo, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta conserve those tires." Like, you gotta make basically, you gotta make sure that you're driving like, a, like basically slower and slower at a constant rate every lap, and that's supposed to be what Checo Perez yeah. is really good at doing. <laughs> like, that's insane. Like going fast first and then like autumn, like slowing yourself down, very like on the tiniest, tiniest little bit. Somewhere around that, like fourteen to twenty five lap window is where you want to be depending depending what tires you've chosen yeah to especially this year to bring to the race because that's <laughs> this insane. this is for the medium tire medium tire yeah yes yeah, so and and in barcelona and, then, and whatever yeah so this is for the medium tire at barcelona yeah. so yeah. each tire above and below will have a, a slightly shifted left or right yeah curve on it yeah and depending how many laps each race is, the distance, and how now, aggressive the surface. Oh my god! Now, now he got to this too this because this, this gets this is too deep though. <laughs> it's it's interesting. I love it, but F one needs the revolution of the hard tires, yeah. fast cars, and just fucking race it out. Oh, it's not it, calculating it, if you go between fourteen to twenty two laps and you degrade your time by point two seconds approximately <laughs> per lap. Yeah. Everything will be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you can, if you can consciously, as a race car driver, yeah. <laughs> drive a little slower every lap, we'll be fine. I See, get it. It's a cool contest, but let's go back to the other shit. <laughs> Wide ass cars, two meters, big floors, fat wings, super downforce, hard tires. Psych each other out to pass. Oh, you so, you psych someone out for a couple laps put pressure and then you w pass them let's, anyway, let's go back to that there's a wealth of information in this in this, this article awesome. alone this yeah awesome like th this keeps going like you're not even like through We're one third. Oh <laughs> yeah look at the bar <laughs> was Mercedes at this. and this is ferrari yeah there's like an individual Ooh, analysis of ferrari. Wow. yeah so but uh, let me let me Ooh. break it down to you yeah so you, you can leave this like and keep scrolling down but um basically according to his analysis here's what we got we basically have a mercedes that's very like very clearly on, on at, at the front but mm -hmm. closely followed by a ferrari that actually when when they're out there and if they can f sort out their like look yeah okay look at look at this this one right here yeah so this is we're talking about ferrari data versus mercedes data and they're not that far off like this mm -hmm. is not that far off and in and indeed at the very beginning it if they're just going for like flat out qualifying they're actually pretty close yeah. look at that so <coughs> this is what's gonna get interesting throughout the year what the, it, mercedes is not or ferrari is not that far off from mercedes this year both all the gaps like they seem to have closed the gap when their engine is on 
right? Like they're mm. they, yeah. they're either gonna be up there trying to uh, to battle the Mercedes, or they're gonna be you know somewhere in the ditch. Um, well, just <laughs> not or not to, not to kick you off you track. Yeah. This morning, I think it was Christian Horner, but s- someone at Red Bull uh, announced Red Bull or say Renault and Red Bull Ty Heuer mm. is expecting an engine upgrade at the Canadian Grand Prix, and their quote was expect something along the lines of ferrari's upgrade last year and by then so, i think that was this morning and then by then all the other teams are going to have an even better upgrade so there's they're still going to be on the back foot honda's the big <laughs> up in the air now Re- renault again they shied away from making any predictions yeah. this morning they they're like oh, yeah okay. don't worry at canada we're gonna come back okay but, but ch- check this out okay so mm-hmm. but because red bull mm-hmm. you'll be you'd be You'd be thinking that maybe they're they're a bit worried, right? Because they didn't like it could it could be that Toro Rosso was actually like a bit quicker than them. But but so ch- check check this out. This is yeah. where it gets this is where it gets messy because you have Mer- Mercedes and Ferrari up here. So if Ferrari is point uh, two to point five seconds a lap off uh, the Mercedes pace, mm-hmm. which is not a lot. Point two point two to point five, you can DRS that. You can DRS you can, that you difference. You can DRS it, oh, yeah. and you can easily yeah. slip one corner. Yeah. And just like, whoo, and yeah. lift, your, lift your foot for like a whoo. You fuck up one corner, that's that's that a lap gone. But then, teams... Williams, right? Teams behind, right? From, the third, third. from the third to the seventh team, uh, in, in terms of the classification, according to F1 metrics analysis, there's only 1.1 to 1.8. That's... So... Th- that's where they stack up wow. against Mercedes. So there's so there's Ferrari up here at point two in the in the back. Then 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 this is basically what what the races are going to look through at the end. Like Ferrari and Mercedes like up here, and then a big gap, and then in the next point seven, point seven seconds, there's going to be a mess of Williams, Red Bull, Toro Rosso, Force India, and Renault, or at least at the beginning of the mm-hmm. year. This is what's going to look like. They're only one. They're from 1.1 to 1.8, all of those teams wow. of, of the Mercedes pace. Interesting. We talked about Force India last week, mm-hmm. their troubles with the Sahara guys in jail. Vijay Malia is moving to England because he got paid out. He got paid to leave his chairmanship of this liquor company that he worked for because of some kind of corruption. Oh, th- they got... Two wicked drivers. Yeah, their team Some is of the doing well. In the and year. Forbes, uh, think I think on Friday maybe last week they published an article about all the earnings of all the teams. Force India made the of all the teams the biggest profit and the biggest jump in profit good, of, good for, for budget revenue last year of any team. It could it could be that Force India is VJ Malin whether by only, corruption or not only only profitable he's, venture. It could, it's <laughs> interesting because he's one of the two do well Sauber Sauber is yeah. complaining about money this morning but one of the two teams that went to the European Commission complaining about the cartel of Formula 1 and the corruption there. For sure. Meanwhile, he's fleeing in anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but we know it's corrupt. He's I mean. fleeing, <laughs> fleeing in jail in India. Who's in the last few spots? He, uh, go, no, okay, but okay. One, one more thing before we move on from the midfield that is going to be a qu- like a crazy battle. Uh, interesting to note: Red Bull and Toro Rosso are indeed very close. Red Bull still edging a little bit, but Toro Rosso. Okay, so the range. Of, uh, of, of the difference in between uh, uh, Mercedes and Red Bull is 1.0 to 1.6 versus Toros is 1.2 to 1.4. So at the at the longer end of that, the Red Bull seem to be so maybe on the longer stints or um, or, or the longer tracks for that matter, the the Toros might have the edge on Red Bull, but the Red Bull does on uh, on, on the majority of it. Now, so there's that that that. Uh, upper to lower midfield bracket uh, from uh, Williams. So, this is the, again, so we have the Mercedes and Ferrari at the top, then a, a really bunched up pack of Williams, Red Bull, Toro Rosso, Force India, and Renault. After that, then there's a big <laughs> another big gap, and basically McLaren and, Sa- and Sauber. They are at 2.2 to 2.7. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But 
But now there wasn't much significant running from either Manor or Haas to make an uh, uh, an accurate prediction from his point of view. But he says that if all the other analyses that he's been uh, reading basically point at Manor and Haas actually being very even and being within a second of the McLaren and Sauber. So that means that at the back as well, there could be some interesting fights with Haas and Manor like trying to basically catch up to this maybe Sauber trailing mm. the McLaren or something like that. There's going to be... There's not going to be like like it was last year, uh, like a clear, there's the manners way at the back. Mm -hmm. No, like even the backpack, the back, there's not, there's not going to be back markers as such. Right. All of these teams, at the end of the day, they're going to be like, it's not going to be like, at, at the end of last year, we had a manner that had been left like four times or whatever by the end of the race, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I don't, that's not going to happen this yeah, year. Yeah. They got the Mercedes. It's uh, kind of like this year, like manner is to Mercedes what has is to ferrari, ferrari yeah <laughs> and it's almost like there's a secondary race between mercedes and ferrari yeah. between manor and has like a proxy war <laughs> <laughs> basically yeah. they're, they're having a proxy war at the end of the grid <laughs> yeah they are. that's kind of brilliant <laughs> amazing yeah it's great i heard this fact about uh, i told you just before the show about testing over 25,000 miles completed by all teams combined at the eight days of testing. In kilometers, I just converted it, 40,233. So somewhere around there. It wasn't exactly 25,000 miles. Yeah. 40,000 <laughs> kilometers <laughs> of testing is oh my God. fucking crazy. Some people were even saying that, like, <laughs> like, not even, like, not even 15 years ago, preseason testing like you'd go and like you'd hope to put in like 20 laps all together because yeah. it, stuff was just so unreliable like you <laughs> you went you went to like start up these engines and or the car would break or something so like really i mean the fact like this has been these have been pretty much like the most mileage intensive testing that that has happened and if one because it has to be as well there's mm -hmm. not that much in season testing there where, whereas there used to be before and the season is starting like the earliest it has been in a very long time. Yeah. What's the date again? March the twentieth. Oh my oh my god. Yeah. A couple of weeks, brah. You wanna pull up the uh the tires for Melbourne? I just highlighted it there. Cause uh this is kinda related to testing because well, teams had to choose their tires for testing under the new rules mm -hmm. before before testing. <laughs> so choo choose the tires for Melbourne oh before God. testing was started or completed and before the new qualifying was right. announced. Yeah. But if you look down at the bottom, Harianto, Verlein, the only two guys with four medium tires. It's kind of interesting. And you look at the top, Hamilton and Rosberg. Hamilton's got one medium. Rosberg's got two. And uh, Hamilton's got an extra soft pair of tires over, over Rosberg. <coughs> oh my God! Because they're tight. Jesus. <laughs> the two Ferraris okay. identical. Two Williamses identical. Below that, the two Red Bulls is identical. What's going on? I don't know. What happened? What happened? I was zooming in. And oh, shut the bed. I think you got to zoom. You got to zoom it back out. I'm not even zoomed in. Uh oh. Hold on. You broke it. You broke the internet. Damn Below it. that, two w Red Bulls, identical. Magnuson and Palmer, identical. Hockenberg and Perez for Cindia, identical. Verstappen and Sainz, identical. Alonso and Button, identical. Ericsson and Nasser, not the same. Really? And also, Grosjean and Gr Gutierrez at the bottom, not the same. But there's only, oh, actually, quite a few drivers took, about half the grid took seven super softs and the other half six. There's, actually, if you can pull that back up. Sorry, I if restarted you my Firefox. Oh, my God. Oh my God. There's actually, like, a... Um, Huge variation. Where? Which? In tire choices. The, ho the whole grid. 
Oh but yeah, man. Between soft and super soft, about half and half, and with the mediums as well, about half and half between one and two pairs. This is what we were hoping for. And the the manners with four four each on the mediums. Yeah. But uh, not a lot of teams splitting strategies between drivers other than Mercedes is right? at the very top. Yeah, yeah, at the very top. You got to go way down to the bottom here to find another one. I wonder what happened with that. Like, you know how like that it, it, Mercedes, uh, their whole thing was like, oh, we have one strategist. Only one strategist. Clearly, that's not the case anymore. Because they're yeah. going to have their... They I mean, must have their own, yeah. yeah. But that, that was the thing last year, right? Like, that was th- that was what, what created the whole... Controversy, uh, controversy yeah. in, in, in the Singapore, right? You want... They had a, a Mercedes had a strategist that whose job was to get both drivers yeah. the best position, no matter who was the winner, get both drivers to the end in the best position possible. But yeah, obviously sp- they split tire decision, they split the race decision, and probably something to do with Hamilton preferring the front brakes more. Oh yeah, he goes with the softer tire, a bit longer. Rosberg's a bit gentler on the brakes, I guess. He might be able to last longer on the medium tire, push his brake, push his pit the two further. And the two Ferraris on the same strategy, they, that's what surprised me. Because yeah. they do not have the same driving style. Maybe so they're both a lot more, well, again, they wouldn't have got to, they had to choose these tires before testing the yeah. new car, right? So they wouldn't have been able to, possibly their strategies or their driving styles are more equalized with the yeah. new car. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll see, we'll, we'll see what comes up, and we can't definitely can't wait uh, for things to keep spicing up in uh, uh, in Australia. One th- one another thing that did come out though uh, was this the ridiculous Halo thing. Jeez. Yeah, look, guess, look, look this up. Look, look look this up. F one Halo twenty sixteen. We talked about H- this a yeah. little bit last week. It kind of just happened that day or something, right? Last week. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, it's worth it's worth looking God, at again. There you go. Thing. That second pick. That's a real photograph. Those, those Mercedes ones are mock. They're just mock-ups. Yeah. Oh, that thing does look ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, this this happened so while you were in Florida. Oh, they ran no. this for real on the track. How ugly that yeah, is. Flick, flick through a couple of the, of the pictures here. We can look at. You you were away, but for each of the two Ferrari drivers, they took uh, I think about two laps each, mm-hmm. tested it out. Gave some comments on their how much visibility. they could see visibility. Okay, you can mirror. See, you can basically see how this is a carbon fiber thing, so it's it's only supposed to be oh there. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, more sponsorship. That's exactly what they really. Did. Yeah, I think that's that's why they're pushing for it. Yeah, um, but yeah, so see, you can see how it's carbon fiber. So this one right now, obviously, it's not what it. Ha- it's not even how it would look like in the end because it, they're not going to be carbon fiber. They're going to be steel. Steel. Yeah, it's going to be something like heavy. 15 kilos. Like they want to change the regulation next year to add, I think it was 20 kilos to the minimum weight of the car. Wow. For the purpose of accommodating. I assume it would be aerodynamically formed with carbon around it, but a steel tube, basically. A heavy steel tube. Holy like f- shit. A 40-pound steel tube like, that would like be... Like scaffolding s- gray, probably. Wow. Yeah, like a s- <laughs> not a hollow tube, like a what solid that tube. Mercedes one? Because that thing looks... I, yeah. I, I like the design that's, of that. That's basically what everybody said. Like Everybody, like, everybody oh, yeah, was yeah. like, oh, I'm so disappointed. Like This does not look like anything that we were sold by Mercedes. Like This, this was so a mock-up. See so if you can scroll down. and Some, some people have uh, photoshopped... What like the visibility what the, will the look driver like. view might be. See if you can find it while we're talking. But uh, some drivers are super against this. Like yeah, Hul- Hulkenberg has come out against it, uh, big time. Ricciardo has come out against Hulkenberg, telling him don't be a hero. <laughs> um, Lewis already said if yeah. that thing's in my if car, it, I'm gonna take it off. He's yeah. Well, he said he said I hope the regulation is optional, because if it is, I'm not having it. Yeah. Uh, Julian Palmer. That, that looks cool. Jo- yeah, but that's, it's, it wasn't uh, going to be like that, obviously. Julian Palmer, who no, is a Formula cool. One driver now, but also has a second job as a race commentator. Yeah. He does GP2 commentary. I don't know if he will this year now, but um, he said he doesn't want it. He's against it. He feels, as far as racing goes, it should probably be introduced into 
indie first if anything because indie racing is mostly city circuits with no runoff and all the debris kind of gets thrown kind of like funnels back into the track because there's no runoffs there it's just they're fenced off high speed whereas f1 has massive runoffs on every corner so it's not as needed that's not a bad point Vettel was super for it Raikkonen seemed like he kind of was for it because he didn't talk too much shit well he was just it kind of seems, seems like the guys that have their own babies at home want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could, it could it could be just that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a Ricciardo's deal. Maybe he's got some baby kangaroos at home. Yeah, he's taken care of. Uh, and this obviously like has divided <laughs> the paddock like up and down. Like Martin Brundle is against it. He said he wasn't explicitly against the idea right. if it saved a life, but he doesn't like it. Yeah. He do, he doesn't want to sound like an asshole, but... There it is. So, yeah, that's what it looks like from from inside. Oh, my it's God. A pretty, yeah, it's a pretty good idea. Oh, the second one right there to the right. Boom. There is you. So there's a Photoshop of what it might look seem like in the, in the seat, which is not too bad, right? It doesn't really... It's still... It's not really blocking anything important, right? Yeah. For I me, mean, this like, is kind of crazy. This this is a lot of negative space. What can I really say though? Like, if somebody doesn't die because they have that, awesome. That's awesome. Has I mean, like, this is. But would this have protected other drivers before? But that's the thing. The the most recent like big F one accident that happened was Jules Bianchi's death in uh, two years ago in he Japan. He might not have been saved. Yeah, he might not have been. Yeah, the most. But, I mean, if that was a solid steel bar, maybe he would have. But the other guy, Justin Wilson from Indy, he probably would have. He got hit with a carbon wing, like a wing hit him. He was just going really fast, and it would have saved his life. Maria de Villota, I, would she? Maybe she, she probably would have. Maybe she could have survived. For me, I hadn't thought of it before, but I'm with basically Lewis Hamilton's point of view. Not because it's his point of view, but because I hadn't thought of it that it should be optional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure, and, and even if you change the regulation to put the minimum weight to include that, mm. and a driver who opts not to equip it on their car just has to wear a ballast, why not? Yeah, but you could get an advantage for putting your ballast under your ass or. instead of on top of your head. Yeah, I don't know. However, they figure that out. But I would respect a driver who would opt not to take the safety precaution yeah it. and me too and and, and, and and you know what and that's <clears throat> i'm i'm all for the safety as well but yeah what do you it, say but like, hulkenberg even said like man it's it's already too safe it's already like we're walking away from all of these injuries there's got to be like there ha- there just simply has to be uh, an, an element of danger that everybody takes on board that's why it's difficult that's why it's hard that's why they're the best drivers in the world like that's 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 one of that's one of the biggest reasons. My point of view on this is that, like, yeah, it's it's something like this is coming. It's gonna happen. Either way, because everybody's all crazy about the, uh, the gotta the, keep the safety safe. and whatever. So I mean, and and you know, as as we hadn't had a death in Formula One for years, you know, since Senna, then right. Jules Bianchi, the, all of the deaths are happening because of in motorsport now are happening because of head injuries head injury right so there's gonna have to be some sort of thing for the head like, t- to address that is this the best solution though i don't think so i think it's i think you still have to keep like an element of of putting these cars on on a, on a bedroom poster you know like I'm, these, I'm, these cars have to be beautiful i'm pretty so, curious to see who um who pushed for this like who was fia okay yeah, yeah. On on the back of what you just said though, and on the back of what I just said about Ricciardo, mm. I have this note from a couple of weeks ago that I just never brought up. Ricciardo was quoted in like uh, some sort of interview and uh, interview with him, an article about him. It's uh, I found this interesting because he's been one of the guys pushing for the halo. Yeah, but at the same time, he said the way F one is now. He's really looking forward and hopes that 2017 is what's being promised because right now he said 20 F1 in 2015 is too easy. 
as far as far as 2015 was yeah because you there's too much grip not enough tire grip with the regulate the purposeful degradation Mm -hmm. the head protection he's still for but he said the step up is too easy he's not he said this isn't what i dreamt of when i was a kid it's not what i was like striving for it's not what i saw when i was a kid the difference gp2 if you look at gp2 they're reaching the same or even more speeds on some tracks more downforce and the step up to f1 is more about or a lot about money and if your brain can handle like 17 car modes and, yeah. and changing those changing those changing those. we'll talk about the new um radio regulations in a minute in the next segment here but I'm just just interesting that Ricardo's pushing for these head protection, but at the same time he said F one's not as big of a step up <clears throat> as it needs to be, and it's kind of yeah, it's the, there's not like the the her- heroic thing. Yeah. So, so at the same time he's criticizing Hulkenberg, he's on the same side really. I really hope 2017 is what they, what's promised. <laughs> Two meter Me wide too. cars, 1.6 meter wide floors, fat low wings, and they still huge didn't agree diffusers. on a thousand brake horsepower, which really they should have. That 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 that, that would be that would have been the. That best doesn't even have to be a regulation, but you can you can stick with the f- the flow limit, the fuel flow limit. Yeah. But up the the load, the fuel load. That's true. This is what what's being discussed. This for what's being discussed from Ecclestone. I know you want to talk about Ecclestone in another segment, but the hundred kilo limit and the hundred kilo per hour limit is holding back. <clears throat> keeping on what Lewis was talking about, there, mode three going full out for the full race. Yeah, pushing hard, and the tires aren't built well, on purpose. A the bit, tires a bit aren't of that is also the, the the reliability, like because the yeah. engines have to last. Yeah, for the whole year. Like, as we talked about last week, if you didn't hear last week, I know a lot of people didn't because we did a shitty <laughs> video in my living room with a cell phone. But there's still talk that the 21st race, whatever, whichever one it could be, yeah, maybe Silverstone, maybe Germany, maybe something else, might not happen this year. The regulations have been upped this year from four engines to five yeah. to include that. To include that. 21st race but there's the distinct possibility yeah that 21st race might not happen there might only be 20 and then there might be an extra engine floating around for everybody oh yeah this year oh yeah except maybe honda oh but uh but that that's all i got to say about that yeah Okay. Oh, actually, one thing before uh, we stop talking about uh, testing altogether, I really want to bring attention to this really cool thing that I hadn't seen before. Um, anybody, any, anybody do this before? Um, Mike, this is the link that I have highlighted right now. This is something. Cheers to F1 Fanatic for putting this together. This is one of them. You can you can spend if you're an F1 fan, you can spend like hours on this so uh if you if you are lis- a listener just go to f1fanatic.co.uk and you'll find this and it's basically a tool that they put together with pictures from testing where you can do the side by side no but it doesn't stop there it doesn't stop there go 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 okay scroll down a bit no no okay a little bit up so you can choose which car Th- this i sh- i shit you know like, okay so go this go put badass. go put the Renault beside yeah, and oh, how did I miss this? And then change, yeah, do change images here. You gotta click that green button. Yeah, <gasps> like, what? and now. Wow, that's cool. No, but n- keep going down, man. This is gets crazier from the oh, back. From the back. Yeah. Oh wow. You can see. Whoa. I know, right? Wow, that's fucking <laughs> cool. <laughs> I never seen this before. So you can see immediately the difference between like they chose to use uh, the one pipe for the for the wastegate versus the two that uh, the Renault and Mo- or sorry that the Haas uh-huh, and most uh-huh. people did. Yeah, they used one fatter one on top. Yeah, and use that as a support. <laughs> oh, they got a support. No, no monkey, monkey seat. seat. Yeah, Jinx. <laughs> Person Jinx. Oh, what's a monkey seat? The, uh, this okay. Go back to the right. This thing here. Ah, uh, okay. This extra little wing. They call that the monkey seat. 
Ted calls it, Ted. I think Ted invented that term. <laughs> it's oh but look God. from the side. The side views. Sort of related to this. Did either of you guys see the Honda McLaren was using the bicolored Flovis paint? Oh yeah, we have. We yeah yeah that thing is cool too. Because that was pretty sick. Yeah. Did you have the link for that? You got yeah. a picture there? Uh, it's it was within those pictures that we showed at the very beginning. Okay, let's let's pull that up and I'll, I'll explain it for for a quick second. Yeah. So this F one fanatic. Fanatic. co dot uk compare every F one car of twenty sixteen from every angle. Look that up. But yeah, this this Flovis thing was pretty okay. cool. Let if me you, see if, if I can find a picture. If you got that link quickly, I'll explain it. McLaren, you you've heard of this Flovis paint? You've seen it before, where they paint the neon. They put like yeah. a, a goop of neon paint yeah. and then drive fast and see how it kind of <laughs> kind of how it swoops uh, like sticks to the car. Yeah, they put. A, s- a goop of green on one half of the one half of the front, <laughs> and a goop of red on the other half of the front, and then drove and checked how the green and red crossed over. So they had sort of a rainbow effect. They had some of the air, so they saw some of the air from the right hand side, yeah, and some of the air from the left hand side crossed over. So they had a bit of green on one and a bit of red on the other. That's and they, fucking crazy. Yeah, it's kind of an F1 first, the, the new idea. They use a bicolored Flovis paint to see how the air f- flowed across the car. Bi- Did you find diagonally. it? Diagonally. Yeah, here, hang on. It's in It's in that. If, if you check in, on uh, Sky's episode 8 of the Paddock Uncut. Okay, go four to the right. You'll see a mini segment about that. Or it might have been from Ted's. There, there, there. There, oh, there we go. Here's, that's what Here's I a saw. photograph. Yeah, so kind of a rainbow. You see some of the green paint has crossed to the red side and some now, of the red paint's no. crossed to look, the green look, side. Look, look at this. Okay, so they, they dumped this and all like mostly on the front wing, eh? Right. And then they and also they put p- both put, colors yeah. on the bottom. So, yeah, so they put red at the bottom and you can see how some of the red from here actually made it all the way to the top. Wow. Yeah, that's probably what it was supposed to have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is <laughs> that is one of the... Yeah, this but is you one don't of see the it on clues. the opposite. No, they only put green on the one side. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I mean, th- you can put it, you can pretty much assume that whatever the air, the airflow is here going to be the same on the other side, right? Yeah. But you can see some of that green on Didn't the ma- bottom, right? Make it, 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 it did cross it over. Yeah. You'd probably need to see a right hand side. And over here, down. there's red and green. Uh, this is a, so this is a really th- cool is picture. Is this assuming that this red is going underneath the wing? Well, no. This the, okay, when they because painted it originally, they just when they painted the red originally, they painted the. Like the the, so the part, underside, the underside of the wing, they painted oh, it red. Wow. So red from here couldn't have come from anywhere else other than the under part of the wing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. That's so cool, right? Fuck, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this freaking sport. Anyway, let's uh, talk about some qualifying. Yeah, in just a second. Business. So, remember. <laughs> remember Okay, remember two weeks ago when we when we sat around talking about the new qualifying format? Yeah, and okay. I remember last week when we sat around topi- talking about the opposite of the new qualifying format. Because the qualifying format that we had discussed about the, the week prior basically got trashed down the window. We were basically like, why Why did we, you know, why, why, why were we told this? Now? And then Bernie Ecclestone turned around and said, like, listen, like... You know, we. I know I said we could have this ready by Melbourne, but, you know, my programmers at, at, program. at FOM might take a little while to actually, like, get this. Sh- let's, say, let's say it may be ready by Spain, and then we can show the graphics and everything on TV. Mm. And we said in this very show <laughs> two weeks ago that that was a ridiculous, preposterous thing to say because... You could program that. Come on, I mean, it wouldn't take three months no. to program that. No, so that's that's yeah. ridiculous. What what my my sort of thought on that was was because Sergio Marchione, mm-hmm. after this proposal that we talked about in depth had been proposed, the next week said Ferrari could not accept in quotes accept this new qualifying format. Ferrari could just, not like, accept said it. No, they're just like. I see that, and uh, no. <laughs> it sort of became a philosophical sort of <laughs> it's like, an idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ferrari <laughs> can't accept it. We can't accept this. <laughs> this is an outrage. It turns out, be- 
<laughs> before we go to I mean, it's better than saying we're going to quit F1. <laughs> yeah. But at some this point, so, back, what, so what they did, what it's, it's, they said that, you listen, listen, we're going to shuffle it around a bit. It's not going to be exactly like this. Well, before that happened, yeah. before that happened, Sergio Macchione at Ferrari said Ferrari could not accept it. And Bernie said we couldn't write the software, but maybe we could have the software ready before the Spanish Grand Prix, mm. which coincidentally is where testing was, was being held at Barcelona. So maybe there was some kind of back, maybe, who knows? Right. Who knows? Maybe there was some right. sort of backroom discussion that maybe since the teams were already testing in Barcelona, they could try out the new qualifying format during yeah. the testing do, do a couple hours. of qualifying runs like see wait, how like, it do feels to simulate check this it, check mm. it out and maybe we'll run the first few races the old way at least you could have practiced here you have an idea what's happening <laughs> and then we'll do that but no no they came up with the compromise you were just mentioning yeah the, the, so there was going to be a compromise of q1 and q2 being the same length of time and then mm. starting like still with the elimination uh and, and the second half of it and chopping like and, and, the, and like, the next driver every minute and a half but q3 being completely unaffected from last year uh as in it was just going to be uh, a, a normal q3 quali qualification from all the way from from red flag or from yellow uh, from green to from green flag to check to check our flag right. 2015 could, rules q3 yeah right yeah okay regular q3 q1 q2 exactly what we see here no, but 16 but and 15 minutes no 16 it was going to be both of them were going to be 16, 16 minutes. minute rounds yeah yeah okay. but that also got shelved but at one point that was that was the thing apparently everybody was signed on it and that mm. was going to happen for melbourne but i guess no now the most recent that we and found also they had uh, I forget which evening last week. There's too many evenings. All the drivers, or at least the drivers that were in the GP mm. DA, mm -hmm. the Grand Prix Drivers Association, had a meeting where there were some sort of paparazzi photos from the outside of God. yeah drivers with their hands in the air, like yeah. waving, shaking their fists. Oh, we don't like Grosjean this. being all like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe some people weren't all for it. But as of Friday, this is what we have for Melbourne. No problem with the software. Yeah, apparently. Oh, oh, actually, I forgot the computer scientists or, you know, my, my programmers actually can do their job and it's going to be ready in two weeks. I, I know. So right. This is That's the wrong. format. So you guys are going to have to explain this to me because I it's, don't understand. It's Take great it away, for us because we've had a ton of shit to talk about. Yeah. But <laughs> it's very bad for the sport because there's way too much to talk about, really. Q1. Is going to be 16 minutes long. Okay. After the seventh minute. Okay. Every 90 seconds, the slowest driver will be eliminated and be taken out. He will pit. Okay. He'll be eliminated. They can figure that out within that. So one by, yeah, by so that time, by the seven minute mark, yeah. whoever's at the bottom of the list, whoever has the slowest time, yeah. goes out. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. And just one, one driver? We see one driver at a time. Every So that, that's what those red dots are. Right. So you hit set. You, so in Q1, all, all, drivers. The, all drivers start. And then by the seven minute, boom. Uh, one you get, everybody has seven minutes of all out madness. Who wow. can do the fastest times? The slowest driver at the seventh minute will be, for, will be asked to pit. He will pit. Okay. At the eight and a half minute... That's 90 similar. seconds later, okay. the next slowest driver out, out of all of them will pick okay. for every 90 second interval until the 16th minute. Now, hang on. If, we, if, if, this is, if we're going to want to say uh, true to form now to what um, uh, the guy from F1 Metrics uh, said, we would have both Manor or Sauber, or sorry, both Manor and both Saubers, I guess, or sorry, ma both Manor and Has. Drivers gone by here, pretty much, because they're they're gonna be the slowest because they're so far down. Maybe. So by the the last two drivers that we have now, that's when it starts to get interesting. Is it gonna be by by the end of the 16 minutes? Is it gonna be a McLaren or is it gonna be a Sauber that comes out? Because is it gonna be Alonso going into Q2, there will be 15 drivers advanced, which means at least one team will be split. Mm -hmm. Mm. By default, one team yep. has to be split. So then there will be a 15-minute qualifying period for Q2. And after the sixth minute of all-out madness, the slowest driver will be eliminated. 
And again, every 90 seconds thereafter, right. every red dot, the slowest driver will pit. Right? This is really confusing. <laughs> it's uh, not it's not really. So every So, so uh, you can, you, in, in, in this whole period people start. In this whole uh, period you can change tires and pit as many times no, no, as you want. Minute, right? Okay. Yeah, so. this is the minute. Yeah, that's a minute. Those okay. are the minute. Yeah, so that those bars are the minute length. Gotcha. Okay. 7, 6 and 5 are the times when elimination when it starts. starts right? 16, 15 and 14 are the total lengths of Q1, of each, Q2 okay. and Q3. And each bar here is like another in between that and that is like another driver leaves, leaves, leaves. leaves. Right. So the, by so the time of Q3, how many cars are Q3? There? Eight. Eight. Eight cars will begin Q3, and there will be five minutes for That it. makes so much more sense. A total 14-minute qualifying period. The first five minutes will be all of madness. At the wow, fifth minute, that's insane. the slowest driver will pit. And again, every 90 seconds until thereafter, until theory, the 14th minute. In theory, yeah. The, oh, no, from the 13th to 14th minute. It, or from the 12th and a half to the 14th minute, it's going to be um, a straight shootout between the two, between the fir- like f- number one and number two, right? Mm. In this, because there's only going to be two drivers left for this part of it. Right. There will only be two drivers on track in the last two minutes. And the balance will be, especially in the last lap, especially since the original Pirelli rules that were set out months ago yeah. w- will still be in effect the one set of tires Pirelli has prescribed that must be used, still must be used, and the set of tires that you qualify on in Q2 still must be used to start the race on. Wow. So there's still that balance of strategy. And in Q3, during that whole 14 minutes, it's still a completely open free-for-all yeah. about when you pit, how many sets of your 13 you use. Yeah. Because some teams might find it more important to use an extra set in Q3 yeah. to qualify higher mm. and lose a whole set for the race that they would have used for the race. you know. Which, now, is, which is partly why some teams are pissed do, that they were forced do, to choose their tires before qualifying was set because they might have saved a set of harder tires. To flip it around, though. It is ridiculous. Yeah, it, to flip it's, it around, it's though. It's pretty crazy. Think of it's what, pretty think aggressive. Of these, Think of these eight <laughs> people. Who are who are these eight people going to yeah. be on on a, uh, you know from what we know from what again Some Mercedes metrics. so it's going to be yeah, it's going to be the two F, the two Mercedes the two Ferraris right looking at Q two forcing one team to be split there's a good chance that Q three might have the bottom two drivers might be from separate teams two split yeah. team two well, split team drivers no, this is what at this is what in the bottom is this is what I wanted to point out man because what will pass, probably we, happen we know we know the first four out of these eight. We do, but we don't know the we don't we don't know the other four because the, the, the first six, after the Williams no because after the Mercedes and the Ferrari remember there's that pack from Williams all the way down to Renault that the track could suit them they could just have they could be like this is gonna be nuts because over here everybody's gonna b- be trying to go out mm-hmm. and there's gonna be tons of traffic like getting in a good lap is gonna be like is gonna go down to like you're like they're gonna be driving hard yeah and and the team the strategies are gonna be scratching their heads yeah. like this could actually this, this seems exciting yeah but especially let's let's not shift yet but in a second in this segment we're gonna talk about the new radio rules mm-hmm. but combined with that it's gonna be crazy but the way that the season is going to evolve now, because the teams had to choose their tires for the first bunch of races before yeah. these qualifying rules were even set. Yeah. So they're all on tires that they chose based on the old rules. Mm. They're going to learn whatever they can. It's going to be a huge mix up. And then for the next races going forward, especially the <coughs> super S- ultra soft will be introduced. And the new rules will have been practiced a bit and known about. It's going to be even more, even more of a mix-up. It's okay. He, he, here's what the detractors have to say. The detractors have to, you know, a, a lot of people from the no camp on these new uh, qualifying rules. Nope. Uh, they they can be grouped as you know the people that are that, that are saying, if it ain't broke, why fix it, mm. right? Mm-hmm. <sighs> to to those people, what I would have to say is, you know. Don't 
don't bash it till you try it kind of. I mean, mm -hmm. I th I think that this could be that's so exactly yeah. Hamilton's quote. Yeah, the, 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 it it could be something that like it it could be a very um, ingenious solution to the problem that the problem apparently that this was meant to solve is the fact that as if, as things stood at the end of mm. last year where everybody ended in qualify at the end of qualifying is pretty much like how the race went right. and and that happened at least for the first like six positions yeah. that is that happened by and large last year what whatever the qualifying order was mm -hmm. that's that's how the race ended so this will have a pretty strong chance at messing up the qualifying orders right. as as a solution to what to that problem to the fact that qualifying meant you know qualifying on pole meant winning the race a lot of times in last year this is probably going to do a lot to to to, to solve that or to help mess that up that now, is the idea now the the other people like are saying like but listen like shouldn't it be you know isn't this more a, a, of a band-aid solution and we shouldn't we be like be talking about the sport in general and shouldn't you know it be things go back to how it was in the 70s Do focus on <laughs> those people have to focus on 2017 and please yeah put something in stone that's gonna be awesome that's that's the thing. We're going to have another chance. It seems so simple. We're going to have outside. another chance to do this in 2017 or at least like by the end of 2020. Or I, 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 the, no, I no, say, don't say, say that. I, don't I should say, say that. at the most. You Sorry. It. No, at the no, most. No, 2017. <laughs> next year is going to be fucking crazy. But this, as I'm not saying it's not a band-aid solution. I actually 100% agree. It is just a band-aid solution. But it is one that can achieve a like, pretty positive, like short-term results. It shouldn't be like it shouldn't be the be all, be, a, be all and end all. But let's give it a try, guys. I'd say I'm, I'm with I'm with Will Boxing on this one. Let's give it a try. Especially, we said it since the start of last year when we started this podcast. 2016 is gonna be a transitionary year. Yeah. Why not go crazy? numbers are dwindling or whatever try all kinds of crazy stuff see what works uh, find out what so works. i got a few questions yeah, yeah, about yeah. come this. back at awesome um i'm gonna sneeze where are they where are they on the grid when they start q1 is that is it like a race where they all start at the same time or is it no no, no. uh everybody yeah. starts from the pits right and yep. um once you at, leave so at what whatever like 3, 8, 3, be 3 p.m. or whatever. 3 p.m. Whenever the yeah, they, then there's a green light that goes on at the end of the pit lane, mm -hmm. and that means qualifying has started. You can take your car out. Usually, right. before that green uh, light comes on, there's already been like a lineup of cars already waiting to go out. Right. At, okay. At, 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 on the pit lane. Right. So okay, teams got based on you know the the but, heat soak test where yeah. you see how long you can park before your car overheats. But they'll they'll move right up, like you said. Uh, you can look on formula1.com right now and see the whole season what time q1 starts at every city right and again it depends like everything in f1 on uh marketing and television rights yeah. so there'll be like whatever time the most people could watch it so <laughs> basically but yeah you to have to a answer, 16 to answer minute your question, window, to answer your window. question properly i say so open window i would say who goes out first on track to qualify during Q1 is going to be the person that's lining up. Not necessarily. If there's some cold weather, the track is cool. You know what I mean? The track could go up 5, 6, no, 7, no, no. 8 degrees. No, no, no. Who goes out first on track at, 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 at here at minute like at, at minute zero, at time zero? Who goes out first on track? Whoever's lining up. Who gets to line up there? It's a first come, first serve. Oh, but that's, sorry, yeah. Yeah, who, yeah, who, who goes out first right. to do that? But whoever uh, you'll see comes that... Comes out first is yeah. up in the air. Yeah, but... That's it. Doesn't matter because you also don't want to go right fresh out at the be at the start of qualifying mm -hmm. because the track is not well rubbered in. That's the oh thing. my god, <laughs> or warm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. Certain tracks are certain countries, yeah. certain times of the year. You're gonna you're certain not, days. Yeah. The weather is cool because of this. Because the of the short warms. time to put in a significant like a a good time, and especially here, I I should say at at Q three at T zero for Q three. Like all you, the big players you have, have to go. Yeah, all the big players are gonna be are gonna want to be. Yeah, they're gonna want to be lining up. Yeah, right. 
Um, eight eight but, cars with a five minute free for all. But on up here, but up here though, in Q one, you probably won't see a Mercedes like just gunning for it right at, right off yeah. the door. They might wait till about here to to to, uh, to send their cars out because right. by then the track will be a little warmer, a little bit more yeah, rubbered yeah. in. So who who would you and say? They might use their harder tires this, and do a shitty. This might be a hard thing to answer, but who would you think would start right at the beginning? Like who who would your guess be? Probably whoever has the most. Uh, um, the, the most, most to lose, the most to gain, and the most to lose. Yeah, oh, like fuck. I'm like a McLaren. I, I right. can see like an, an Alonso going for like, you know, like thinking like if I have the track to myself, if I'm there first, maybe I stand a chance. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And again, after the first races, which have already had their tire nominations chosen before mm-hmm. these rules, which is going to be an extra f- fucked up situation for a bunch of teams. Mm-hmm. When the teams know what's happening, they know the tire choices, then, like you said, maybe McLaren will go out first with a harder tire and push harder and lock a time early. Yeah. It's, it will mix it up. It will mix it up. Hamilton said that. Let's not judge it. Some of the, uh, like, just like the Halo rule, some drivers are for it, some are against it. Some, let's keep it how it was. It's being good. But maybe it could be better. Let's try it out. Another thing I wanted and to mentioned just briefly um you 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 touched on it pretty briefly but like the dynamics of qualifying is now changed like the sort of the energy and attitude that go into it is now much much different right where like i feel like the old last year's model was like somewhat docile Mm. you know what i mean like kind of sedated it's just like ah go out and do your thing but now this seems more of like it's definitely more exciting. There's just more a, of a show element. It's more of a show, it. right? Yeah, like, oh, there fuck. Is. Go, 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 yeah, go. Yeah. Oh, you stuck in the lane. Oh, yeah. fuck. There's, there's going to be a lot more that can go wrong yeah. for, 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 like, for teams in general, yeah. for all teams, for all of them. There's going to be shit that they can't control that can go wrong. Yeah. Uh, like, I, like especially these these five minutes here are going to be crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> One of the arguments. Get out, get out, get out. One of the arguments, which was pretty neutral, but falls between what you said and what we're formula one is trying to push yeah this is still sporting obviously they're Mm -hmm. racing for the fastest time the fastest car to get on first place the old way was a bit more sporting but Mm -hmm. less entertaining you know what i mean like before like somebody might have gone to go get make a tea or whatever right grab a beer for q1 q2 and it's like hey i trained my dog for about 10 months to fetch me beers Gonna use him instead. There's, there's still gonna there's be a break. More of a chance that you're gonna Q2 sit Q2 down Q3. and watch all of this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? And attached to this is the radio ban, which right. started last year. Right. So there was sort of like a rollout to it. And at first the FIA wanted to enforce full out what it, it's it's rule like twenty point one. Yeah, here it is twenty point one. The dri- the quote is the driver must drive the car alone and unaided. 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 That's what And like like it's the <laughs> track boundary rules, which this year the FIA has vowed to enforce more rigorously. Oh, you know, this like is going to be great. Four wheels coming off the car was sort no of more, like no a, more a of blind that. eye. They said they're going to be enforcing that. They will be enforcing this rule. But well, you can't jump? You can't go off jumps? You can't yeah, go. right. You can't, you can't, you can't <laughs> vertically four wheels off the track. But up until last year so a team like uh lotus didn't have and presumably couldn't afford having the full lcd screen on their steering wheel oh shit so they got a lot of info from the drivers or from from the from the pit wall to the drivers and this year this past year 2015 uh teams spend a lot of time rewriting their software to to put a lot of the information that the pit wall would have told the drivers right, into onto that screen bro. for 2016. So this year, every driver has that full LCD screen. And uh, I was reading into this. The FIA, in writing the new regulations, it was easier for them to write a list of the small amount of things that are allowed to be said over the radio as yeah. opposed to writing the list of things that are banned are not allowed wow yeah. so starting out there's it's a short list so it's a fairly short list i'm going to read it to you okay. 
at first a few of these have an asterisk. So these are the only messages that may be passed to the drivers whilst he's in the car and on the track from the time the car leaves the garage until for the first time mm -hmm. until after the pit lane is open. So like you said, when the green lights come on yeah. on the day of the race until the start of the race. So from the time the, the car leaves the garage until the start of the race, these are the short few things that can be said. Instructions to select driver defaults for the sole purpose of mitigating loss of function to a sensor, actuator, controller, whose degradation or failure was not detected or handled by the onboard software in accordance with Article 842. <laughs> and any any new setting chosen in this way must not enhance the performance of the car that prior to the might have been lost prior to the loss of the function. Mm -hmm. So that basically means any sensor that fails, the driver must not be told by the wall that it failed. That it failed. Uh, if if that knowing that could enhance the performance of the car at all. Uh. And the few other things indication of a critical problem with th these are things that are allowed. Right. Indication of a critical problem with the car, e.g. a puncture or warning or damage that could injure the driver. Right. Indication of a, a problem with a competitor's car. Like, yo, like Buddy's car broke down just ahead. Watch out. Yeah. Instruction to enter the pit lane in order to fix or retire the car. Wet track, debris, or oil on the track, which is dangerous. Your yeah. body's slippery with wet, bro. Any marshalling info, like red flags, race start has been avoided, or similar things. Yeah. Or instructions to... S te so team orders are still allowed. Instructions to swap positions with other drivers. Oh. Ooh. So between the time the car leaves the garage to the start of the race, that's, that's the only things you can say. Right. You cannot talk, tell them anything, anything else. As far as the race, this is the short list of things that can be said. Or if this is... Any time through the weekend. Acknowledgement that a driver message has been heard. So they can say, yeah, I heard you mm -hmm. on the pit wall. Lap or sector time detail. Understood, Nico. Understood. Yeah, that <laughs> is allowed. Lap or sector time detail. Lap time detail of a competitor mm. is still allowed. Gaps to a competitor during practice or race. You can say the quotes, push hard, push now, or you will be racing X driver. Mm -hmm. those three sentences help with warning of traffic during practice or the race giving the gaps between cars in qualifying to allow a clear road mm -hmm. so you can tell how far the car is ahead tire choice at the next pit stop recommendation so the so driver you're coming in for the mediums you coming in for the mediums yeah you can tell box, the driver box. which tires they will use at the next stop the number of laps any competitor has done on their tires during the race. The tires that a competitor are on. He's on the mediums. You can tell it what other driver other drivers are on. Info concerning a competitor's likely race strategy. Mm. So any guesses about when, because that's a guess, when another driver might pit. Safety car window, which is obviously due yeah. to safety, when the safety car comes out or not. Driving member, driving breaches, sorry, by team member or competitors. So any penalties or driving infractions come done by anybody on the track can be communicated. Notification of DRS is on or off, which goes off during safety, comes yep. on after safety and after the first two laps. Dealing with DRS failure. So if the DRS mm. breaks, you can say your DRS is broken. <laughs> that's good to know <laughs> change of front wing position at the next stop so if the driver wants a little more a little less downforce that is allowed oil transfer i'm not sure what that even yeah. means when to enter the pits the old box 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 yeah. reminders about track limits so if a driver goes the four wheels off gets yeah. a penalty you can say hey watch yeah, it. Oh, all four wheels on, track, on this track reminders to check for white lines bollards or going to the way the the weighing weighing of the cars is random mm -hmm. so if you have to be weighed that is allowed to be said passing messages from race control which all drivers must receive anyways number of laps left in the race test sequence information during practice sessions 
and weather info. Ooh. That's it. Wow. Which is almost, I would say about half of those or maybe more is to do with purely on safety, safety yeah. grounds. Yeah. The rest the driver must do. So it's going to be a lot more of drivers fiddling with buttons and reading the info themselves. <laughs> But if but that is the challenge of F1 these days, right? You have to be able to to to, to fiddle with those that like is change settings from F1 corner to was one for to corner. Thirty years, yeah. That what everyone yeah. kind of agrees. Make it more the about the driver. Go back I think to. everybody. Yeah, I think everybody can agree. Make it more about the driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let them decide. So there's but I can no information about unless it's you come up with like a multi twenty one or come up with some kind of code words like banana spaghetti alfonso that means go to like strategy four on the steering wheel and pass your teammate yeah you know what I mean? there's gonna be that bullshit but aside from that like the strategy and managing the engine mm -hmm. is supposed to be left up to the driver the fuel fuel rates and braking balances tire temperature yeah. It's all on the driver. You can't tell them anymore. Your your fronts are getting too hot. You're, yep. you're breaking too hard in quarter three. But rem None remember, remember, like when Lewis was like, <laughs> was asking the pit wall, uh, "How's Nico's lap? How's Nico's lap?" Lewis, we can't tell you. Oh, how's how's the weather? How's the weather? Like, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like <laughs> yeah, weather is looking good. <laughs> 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 yeah there's, there's gonna be a lot of that yeah there's gonna be a lot of that <laughs> and somebody somebody in the comments that i saw said so this is over the fia's radios the team radios mm -hmm. what's present preventing the teams from using some sort of cellular technology that's not covered under the uh frequency range of the technical <laughs> regulations or whatever and sending Sending text messages to the steering wheel or some bullshit like that. Yeah, what is? What is? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Nothing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I think that's a good point. Is any other to end it? Mike, play us out. This yeah. was flatoutfever.com on YouTube, Guys. Twitter. Listen to Bamboo. I promise this. I long we, this we promise a, a longer, longer show next week with all kinds of goodies like that, sh like that, that, that contest and everything else. Jay's got to go to one of those jabs, yeah. but we are giving away two tickets for real to the Canadian Grand Prix. This is not a June joke. 10, 11, 12. They've been purchased. Oh. Come back next week.